What's up guys? So today we're gonna talk about the worst transmissions in the world. Some transmissions help sports cars become quicker. Other transmissions help boring cars become more fun. But some absolutely suck and should never have been implemented in the first place. But before we get started, I want to thank our sponsor for this video, Garage Amino, who has solved the problem I have with Facebook. When I post on Facebook, all I do is post pictures of cars. And the issue is, most people on Facebook don't care about cars. So one, they unfollow me. Two, they think I'm weird and want to marry my car, which may or may not be true. But now with Garage Amino, you are in a community of people who actually love cars just like you and I. You can join public chat groups ranging from things like talking about E90 BMWs, which was my first car, to starting an automotive YouTube channel, which actually I'm a part of and going to participate in more trying to help people out. So join Garage Amino, the link is in the description below. Let's get to the worst transmissions in the world. First up, the MT82 transmission in the Ford Mustang. Now in the new generation of Mustang, Shut the fuck up! Shut up, K40! Fuck! First up, the MT82 transmission in the Ford Mustang. It was so bad that it underwent a NHTSA government investigation under the safety of the transmission. The reason being, oftentimes it couldn't actually shift into gear. That means any gear whatsoever. So imagine you are coming onto an on-ramp and all of a sudden it won't shift into fourth gear and you can't accelerate out of the way and somebody rear ends you. Other problems, well, Eddie had an MT82 transmission in his Boss 302 and when going from fourth to fifth gear, his fifth gear completely vanished, it was gone and it cost thousands of dollars to replace. Some people report problems of pushing in the clutch pedal and it not returning to its upright position. There are inherent issues with the design of the transmission and honestly, they should have fixed it before coming out with the new generation. And even still, it's not that good of a transmission. Switch it to a Tremec or something like that. MT82 sucks. Next up, another transmission that hits close to home. The E-Gear transmission in the first generation of the Gallardo. Why is it a problem? Well, it's good at one thing. That's full throttle shift, snapping your neck back into the seat. It's a bunch of fun. But driving around town and in terms of clutch life and reliability, it is terrible. When going from a standstill to a roll, it's jerkier than somebody learning how to drive a manual for the first time. It can actually even stall. Another issue is, an all-wheel drive high-performance car should be able to launch and accelerate 0 to 60 really quick. Well, not with the E-Gear transmission in the first gen. So you have one of two options. You either activate the pseudo launch control, which will destroy your clutch in just five launches. That's not a joke. And it'll cost you anywhere between seven to $10,000 to replace or you bog the engine off the line, you roll slowly like you're in a minivan, and then you can finally floor it. That's not really all that acceptable. Furthermore, the reliability is horrendous at best. The eager lines can blow up, that happened on my Gallardo, $7,000. The actuator can blow up, that's $25,000. The transmission itself can fail, which happened on my friend's Spider Performante, and that is a recent, beautiful, like the pinnacle of Gallardo's and the transmission fail. And it fries clutches like nobody's business. 10 to 20,000 miles if you're lucky, and bye-bye clutch. Too much money. Well, here is both a controversial one and a colossal failure. The eight-speed automatic ZF transmission in the 2014 and 15 Jeep Grand Cherokees, Dodge Chargers with the eight-speed automatic, and Chrysler 300s had a serious, serious flaw that resulted in the recall of almost a million vehicles. Now, this wasn't a problem with ZF's transmission itself. It was the implementation that Chrysler did with the transmission, namely the ergonomics of the shifter design. Instead of in a normal shifter where you get force feedback, moving a lever or something like that between gears, this one would return to a central position every time you would change gears. So to put it into neutral, you would push it forward once and it would return to the main position. To put it into park, you would have to push it forward three times. But the problem is the force feedback wasn't intense enough, so people would often leave their cars in neutral. This resulted in 68 injuries and the death of a famous Star Trek actor who accidentally put the car in neutral, stepped out of his vehicle, and was crushed against his fence at his home by his Jeep Grand Cherokee. That is a shitty design. 
Another on the list of epic failures, from 2005 to 2010, Nissan's Xterra, Pathfinder, and Frontier had issues with coolant leaking and seeping into the transmission. At first that would cause vibration issues, then it would cause stalling, and of course eventually would result in total failure of the transmission. So what did Nissan do about this issue? Well, after a lawsuit, not really much at all. If your transmission failed under 80,000 miles, which pretty much none of them did, they would cover it. Between 80,000 and 100,000 miles, they would subsidize it, so it cost you about $3,000 for getting a new transmission, which already is ridiculous considering the price of the Nissans at the time. And for ones with over 100,000 miles, now usually the problem would occur at about 90,000 or 100,000, the transmission wouldn't be covered at all and it would cost you $4,500. Nice, so an inherent problem with the transmission would be left to the customers to pay for it themselves. If you think several dozen injuries and a death caused purely by a transmission is bad, get this one. From 1966 to 1980, Ford's automatic transmission in the Pinto would often shift from park to reverse. This caused hundreds of injuries, and by the time the death toll was already added up, 77 deaths. The transmission underwent an investigation by NHTSA, yet again, and they found that this was in fact an issue. Now the crazy part is Ford knew in 1972 that there was a problem, and instead of employing a rather expensive fix, uh, the cost per car was obviously very, very cheap, but they sold a lot of cars, they decided to do nothing and instead quietly pay under the table uh, to the families of either the deceased or people who were very injured caused by the transmission. It cost them over $20 million. Not a good transmission design. So there you have it, some of the worst transmissions ever created. Obviously, there are more. And for a supplemental video, we'll do some of the best transmissions created of all time. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this review. Like always, please browse our channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video.